Welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. And if you are ready to go beyond adulting and master being an adult, Dr. Laura Fielding is in the house. She's an author, <laughs> psychologist, all the above. And you're looking really good in blue. We're matching. So that's what's most Excellent. important here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I <That'd be> corny. <laughs> am so honestly just inspired and admire your personal journey so much. I mean, from the runways of Paris and New York to <laughs> becoming a master adult. But I mean, Harvard University, tell us a little bit about your personal journey and how you became a, a master of your own emotions. Uh, okay, so how I became master of my emotions, that's where, okay. So first I did drop out of high school to mm -hmm. go and do the modeling oh, thing wow. in, mm -hmm. in Paris. And uh, I was, you know, I. My entire life, I never thought that I could go back to school. I thought I was the dumb blonde because I was a model, and that was sort of uh, told to me. Um, but I watched my, my fellow colleagues and models you know, making choices that I didn't understand. Why are they doing that? That clearly is not working for them. They were sleeping with the playboys, taking the drugs, and their lives were spiraling out. And Not it, adulting. Not, not adulting. adulting well, exactly. <laughs> and uh, never course corrected. And I was mm. getting scared, and I was devouring every self-help book I could get my hands on and actually reading about religions and saying, maybe there's a rule book here, maybe I can figure this out. And so I read about every different religion and tried to figure that out. Um, but eventually somebody said, well, why don't you go back to school and learn about these things? And I thought, me? I can't go back to school. I'm a high school dropout. Uh, but then I went to SMC, Santa Monica City College, who I'm eternally grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, it was $11 a unit at the time. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh and what is the risk here? Mm -hmm. And I got A's. So I had just continued with it. And what I thought at the time, what I believed at the time was that something about the way we take care of our bodies really affects our minds. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, it's the extreme of taking drugs or just not listening to your body. At the time, that was kind of novel. Uh, but my journey was about looking at the first the biological research. So my undergrad and master's degree are in psychophysiology of the stress response and trying to figure out what happens when we're not taking care of our body. And then my doctorate level training was in the mindfulness-based treatments and how we can use our mind to influence our emotions. And those are the skills I teach now. So the book is based on the culmination of all of that research and work on um, taking care of your, making your body more right. healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but the mindfulness piece in the book is really about tapping into how does, we're talking about inside versus outside mm -hmm. today, right? So the book is about looking at and learning how to differentiate. What's happening outside? Right now we're all sitting here on this set in West Hollywood and I'm speaking. That we all agree upon. Mm -hmm. But what's happening on the inside is very different for all of us. We're all having different thoughts. We're all having different emotions, bodily sensations, and impulses about what we're maybe going to say next. Mm -hmm. And so the book teaches all of us how to identify that process and then identify the patterns that are showing up. Like, what are the kind of situations that are triggering that thing I don't want in my life? And how do so I, true. and then it goes into the skillfulness of how to deal with each piece of it's that. It's so equation. true. Yesterday I was speaking with a client and they were having another issue in another relationship. And it was like, you know, Passion. why can't I find somebody? And what? And it's like, yeah. it, it just begins to go out over and pattern out in every single thing, whether you're yeah. dealing with money or relationships or health, whatever. And it was like, for so many people, it's such a shift to think, oh, it's me and my consciousness. What's going on with that? So is this for somebody who has already kind of gone through that awakening and they're really ready to go to like a really advanced conversation or is it for somebody that is just kind of beginner. really beginner yeah um thank you I was, yeah yeah <laughs> okay. i knew we're going i loved it he yeah. knows my mind yeah. <laughs> so I, it's it, you know it's one reviewer said i am asking a, i mean it's a big ask in this book it's simply written so literally an eighth grader can read it i hope uh but it is a big ask because it is saying what is the common denominator in this pattern and most of it is me or all of it is uh, me <laughs> well you know <laughs> you know i think it, i think all of it is our reaction is what's in our control, right? Mm -hmm. How do I respond to this situation? Yeah, totally. We are all dealt with different difficulties on our roads that we travel, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know your histories, but I'm gonna guess that our histories are, we're fairly uh, fortunate in our lives. And so we don't have the bumpy roads and terrains that a lot of people have. So this book tries to honor everybody's perspective. So I grew up in Los Angeles around sort of the Beverly Hills kids. I grew up in the Valley, but my friends were all the sort of celebrity kids mm. that had a lot going on, but they, 
But like my model friends, a lot of them, you know, turned to drugs and didn't do so well. And so this book is for someone who's willing to do the work of reflecting in more quietly or just, you know, read it through and get a cursory understanding of how your psychology works. Love that. I just love your work and oh. I love, I truly do, and I love your heart. And, um, you know, one of the things I pe think people are challenged with when it comes to mindfulness is just even just understanding what it is. Yes. I think there are a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. about what mindfulness and what mindfulness is and what it isn't. Could yes. you just describe a little bit or define a little bit what mindfulness is? I love that question. And I want to say I'm really touched that you like the book because I've been hearing you cite so many masters. Mm. Yes, <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> including <laughs> yours truly. Well, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness, first of all, is not relaxation. Mindfulness is not just being positive. Relax. Mindfulness is not something that you do when it's the right time. Mindfulness is a way of moving your attention in the present moment to be aware of everything that's going on. And what the dashboard form or the book guides you to do in the book guides you to do is how do you identify those components? I just so the facts, the thoughts, emotions, bodily sensations, and impulses. Mindfulness is attending to all of that with equanimity and letting go of judgment, noticing judgment's just more content you're adding to it, and staying present in a non-reactive way. Is there any kind of tips or tricks or strategies you could share with us Absolutely. to bring us into that state of mindfulness? Absolutely, so mindfulness doesn't need to just happen through meditation, right? So meditation wouldn't be terribly t tele-friendly. And mm. <laughs> that's part of why mindfulness has a marketing difficulty, because it happens on the inside. So uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. The first great example I give is, uh, can you notice right now that you can feel your bottom in the chair? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. your bottom's been there the whole time, and now that you're aware of it, you've got buttness. Mm -hmm. So we get caught in difficulties because we try to get rid of uncomfortable experiences. I'd like you to try for yourself right now. I'd like you to try to unfeel your butt in the chair. Well, now that I can feel it, I can't unfeel <laughs> it. Exactly, but we, when, once we feel a feeling, and a friend comes to us and we say, well, don't feel that way. Well, we can't unfeel our feelings, but we try to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's the example of what doesn't work. Mindfulness is just allowing yourself to feel the buttness. Mm -hmm. In fact, your butt is your anchor, right? You can just anchoring in your body is an excellent way of anchoring your attention. So just noticing that you can feel your feet on the floor, feel your bottom. Mm -hmm. I just like love that, that description. Um, I know that for me, for a long time, I thought of mindfulness as being full of mind or full of thoughts. It was thinking more and analyzing more and, I you know, know. And, right? I and I, need more. Yes, yes, and that's what it sounds like. And over time, for me at least, the experience of mindfulness has been about being not full of mind and thoughts, but being full of awareness mm -hmm. and to feel more right. and think thinking less sort of comes easily. And right. I, I would it, say more awareness. The relaxation and thinking less mm -hmm. is like the side effect, right? So mm -hmm. mindfulness is aware that you're thinking, right? So it's what we call meta awareness. Mm -hmm. you're, aware, you're thinking about thinking or watching your thoughts go, oh, I noticed that I just had strong thoughts about that, or I had, so it's, it's yeah, it's that stepping mm -hmm. back with compassion. So I have a question for you. Um, I think one of the greatest questions I've been asked in interviews late, later, lately is, is what sets you apart? Because I think that, and I really do love your work, so I'm not like questioning your work, but just curious, because if someone's, you know, there's so many practitioners out mm -hmm. there, what sets you apart from another practitioner? Well, first of all, I've, I would say that there are many excellent, amazing practitioners out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I'm not by any means the be all and end all of mindfulness based practitioners. Um, and there are many colleagues. In fact, I'm going to be speaking with my colleague, Wab Robin Walser. Hi, Robin. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, because she to me is the therapy whisperer. She is amazing at this, of pulling you into that space mm -hmm. and moving in and out with you and holding you there and validating you. Uh, but what I'll say is a little different is that um, I'm only mildly afraid of the camera. <laughs> um, that I've had experience in front of the camera, that, uh, that I'm vociferous and passionate and a little loud and a little fast. And so um, I think it's my energy that I'm bringing to it. So I think yeah. that that's why I wrote the book and added the videos with the book, uh, because I think that clinicians don't tend to be ones to jump in front of the camera mm -hmm. so much. So yeah. I would say that there are many excellent clinicians totally. out there that can do what I do. Thank you for that answer, because I'm always like, I, you know, you want to be like, well, let me just sell myself and say like I'm something, whatever. And, and the truth is there's so many great practitioners. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. absolutely. Yeah. My way was just one way of getting at it. Thank you so much. So tell people how they can find you. Uh, you can find me at mindful-mastery.com or at at mindful underscore mastery um, on Instagram. 
And where can they buy Mastering Anywhere. Adult? Excellent books are sold. There you go. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Amazon mm -hmm. especially. Well, thank you for this GPS to mm -hmm. adulthood. I'm yeah. going to need your autograph on this. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Wildland.